Hi, I'm your Egyptian and I hope you're feeling pious, because this week we're talking about temples. I'll try not to make this video too long, even though temples are literally my favourite thing. I'll be focusing on temples from the New Kingdom onwards, since it's in this period that a pretty standardised ground plan comes together, and also I specialise in the New Kingdom, so... On a basic level, temples are residences for the deities who have shrines there, but there's a lot more going on than that. But first, let's look at the layout. There are four main areas of a temple, the entrance pylon, the open court, the hyperstyle hall, and the sanctuary and offering areas. The pylon is the entrance gateway to the temple, and is often decorated with images of the king smiting foreign enemies, which serves to keep out chaotic forces. It's also shaped roughly like the Horizon Hieroglyph, but more on that later. The open courtyard is an area used in certain festivals, and is where, sometimes, certain select members of the public might be allowed to come into the temple. You then enter the enclosed areas of the temple, where only the purified priests could go. The hyperstyle hall contains lots of columns, so many in fact, and so close together, that they probably don't really serve much of a supportive function. Or on that later as well. And finally, you enter the sanctuary, the narrowest, darkest and most restricted area of the temple, where only the king and high priest were allowed to enter. It's here that the god dwelled within their statue, and where daily rituals would be carried out for them. Temples were not churches or cathedrals that served a congregation, though the local community could engage with them in various ways. They were institutions carrying out ritual activity for the benefit and preservation of the world and society as a whole and were also often very powerful landowners and economic powers. They were also ritually brought to life, and so were themselves physical manifestations of the gods' presence. Very importantly, temples are the universe in microcosm. Their architecture and decoration ensures, creates, and perpetuates a harmonious world order. For instance, if you look at a temple in cross-section, you'll see that the floor level gradually rises as you move towards the sanctuary. This effectively turns the sanctuary into the mound of creation that grows out of the primeval ocean, and the plant-like columns of the hyperstyle hall are the surrounding marshes. In this way, the temple reenacts the creative moment, with the resident deity taking the part of the creator, looking out from the sanctuary over the world. Now looking at decoration, the bases of walls and columns often have plant motifs running along them. Above this might be images to do with the bounty of Egypt, like figures holding produce. Then you get scenes with the king in them, perhaps building the temple. And then of course you have the gods. And finally the ceilings were painted blue with little yellow stars to represent the sky. You therefore get the whole span from earth to heaven represented and encapsulated in the temple's decoration. There's so much more to say, but we better stop there. Be sure to like, subscribe and share, and tune in for more next week. I'm your Egyptian nerd, and remember, there's always more to discover.